A few weeks ago, I demoed how to reapply undercoating to the wheel wells of my 964 with a rattle cane. On today's episode, we're gonna do a complete undercoating of my 1995 Impala SS with the new Wagner Moto Coat Sprayer. Steps, techniques, and where to get the right products so you can protect the underbelly of your car. That and much more coming up on this very sticky episode of Drive Clean. The first step of undercoating your car is to clean the surface. In my case, I drove my car for the past week or two in the winter without giving the undercarriage a proper wash, so it was necessary to use a power washer along with a 90 degree angle to blow off any loose road debris and dirt. Anytime I have a power washer and an angle nozzle, I have way too much fun. They told me I spent 15 minutes washing the underneath of my car. Well, time flies when you're having fun. Next, I pulled it back into the shop and got it lined up for the lift. By the way, the Impala SS's are known for a not so Mini Cooper-like turning radius, so she's a lot of fun in tight spaces. I wanna be clear that having a lift is a luxury, and I understand that the weekend warrior might not have access to one, but this process can be done on proper jack stands as well. Although not as easy, it will still be effective. Once on the lift or jack stands, Remove the wheels to avoid overspray and to get full access to the wheel wells. Be sure to put down a drop cloth in case of any unexpected drips. If you're using jack stands, you want to put down the cloth before you go through the trouble of jacking the car up. Next, John and I dry the undercarriage with a terry towel, compressed air, and a few fans to ensure the area has no moisture remaining. While drying, inspect the area for rust sensitive electrical connectors, exhaust, or other areas that get hot so that they can be wire brushed and or taped off. And wow, did my car need some scraping to remove the rust. 225,000 miles and living in New York City will certainly take its toll. And I have no doubt it was time to undercoat my car. This is John and he happens to work for Wagner. I met him and his team while walking around at the 2014 SEMA show looking for interesting new car care products and machines. I watched the scrolling video they had playing in their booth and I thought it was pretty cool. Since I had only thought of them as a home or fence DIY painting tool manufacturer. But as it turns out, this tool was designed for automotive use. And at the time of this filming, this particular machine was a finalized prototype. So I was super excited to be the first one to get my hands on it and let you guys decide if it would be another tool in your car care arsenal. All right, John, so you've seen the underneath of my Impala here and it definitely needs some love. Definitely yep. undercoating, right? Yep. But before we talk about all the steps and procedures, what do I got here on the table? Sure. First thing we'll talk about is the, the new Wagner Motocoat Sprayer. What it is, is it's a spray system made for spraying protective and customized coatings. All right, so you got two sprayers here. What's the difference? Well, actually, this is all one spray system. We just have two different front ends. This front end is designed for your thick coatings, things like bed liners and undercoatings. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you a thick, heavy finish with a light texture on it, uh, but it gets into all those fine areas that you want to create some protection, like in an undercoating situation. Okay. The other front end that we have is for uh, doing things like rubberized peelable coating or even some light painting and, um, and other kind of fine detailing on a vehicle. This is going to give you a a smooth, even finish, mm -hmm. um, and but it's going to be a little bit slower production. In terms of the spraying, I see that there's a couple of different switches here. One's, I guess, wide and one's, you know, narrow. Exactly. As I mentioned up front, is we try and make this really easy to use. So we give you a nice uh, visual on a wide versus a narrow spray pattern. You can also adjust it if you want to do a horizontal or a vertical spray pattern. Oh, nice. And then for finer adjustment, if you're in, like in an automobile, sometimes you get in tighter spaces mm. and you want to dial down the amount of flow, oh. that's what the red dial is for, is you dial down how much material is actually coming out of the nozzle. Got you, and it's on both, yeah, it's on both of these. Yep. And now in terms of the machine, there's multiple levels? Yep, so absolutely, this this is the turbine base. So instead of having a compressor that it's, it's providing the air, this is a, think about a, uh, a vacuum cleaner, but in reverse. And you can set it for either a one or a two setting. 
One is for your thinner material so you don't create too much overspray um, and you, get, you have a, a tighter control. Two is for those thicker materials like an undercoating mm -hmm. um, that you want to be able to atomize that thick material and break it up so you get a nice pattern and even coverage. All right, so how do you switch in between the two of these if you're in, a, in the middle of a job? Sure, very easy. So they just clip on to the, to the handle and clip right off. It's as simple as that. And then in terms of the products that you use in here? So you can get these uh, uh, any auto store or online. Uh, we're going to use a, a Rust-Oleum uh, undercoating product mm -hmm. uh, that you can purchase. And of course, you're going to need to, as a part of the prep that you were mentioning, uh, you're going to need things like a scraper, a wire brush, um, and you're going to want to mask off some areas uh, of the car, like your exhaust system. And then at the end of it, obviously, you've got to clean up. So you're going to need acetone or whatever the suggested cleaner is by the, the coatings manufacturer. Average. So this is really geared towards the guy at home in the garage kind of thing. Yeah, like absolutely. Nothing crazy, no wild tools or anything in terms of difficulty. Nope. This is pretty uh, simple and easy to do. Yeah, you don't need a spray booth. You don't, need, you don't even need a compressor to use this. You could do this in your driveway, in your garage, uh, wherever you'd like to tackle this project. All right, so now we have all our tools. I think it's time we, uh, we hit this thing. It is, it's in need of some serious love. Let's get started. Are you ready? All right, yeah. cool. As I mentioned before, tape off any electrical areas to avoid covering the connectors with undercoating, which will be challenging to remove if parts need to be replaced in the future. The goal is to cover the metal frame and chassis. But first, we scraped, and then we scraped some more to remove the heavy oxidation in old flaking paint to ensure a solid bond with our coating. As with any painting job, the initial prep is widely considered the most important step in affecting the end result. So take your time, wear safety glasses, and realize your shoulders are gonna burn. Yeah, so the angles we're trying to get uh, for you guys, this is a little rig that Tommy made up. Him and all of his infinite wisdom. We put GoPros everywhere. Matter of fact, there's a GoPro all the way up on the top now too. Because my undercarriage was so rusty, John suggested using rust primer to coat the oxidized surface prior to undercoating. As you can see, it's a brownish color and much less viscous than undercoating. So the first step, I used this smaller front end sprayer because it was a better choice for this particular application. To use this tool, fill the reservoir with product and simply plug it into a standard power outlet. Attach the hose to the turbine machine and then the front end sprayer to the hose, and now you're ready to go. For the first coat, I lightly applied the primer so that it would dry quickly before I added the second coat. Now, off the record, I have to tell you that this is the most fun thing to do ever. It got to the point when I was actually hoping I missed a spot so that I could keep playing with the sprayer. It's kind of addicting. Check this out. I got Spencer here from Speedsport Tuning. He's playing with it because he's so enthralled with the machine. What's interesting is you guys are within a few feet of him. I'm standing right here while he's spraying. Look how close. And there's there's no overspray. It's kind of like he was saying. It's, it's like shooting with a ballpoint pen. I'll, I'm going to use it on the early forces. Yeah. Underneath, the four pins are always rusting out, and this makes it really easy. I would absolutely use this on the early portion on the belly. Crazy. For the second coat of plank, I mean primer, I added my Roops pen to the top of the sprayer for absolutely no reason at all, other than I wanted to use it like a laser pointed scope. Again, it's kind of addicting. So we're covering up all the uh, parts of the car, like the exhaust that gets super hot. Um, you wanna make sure that none of the undercoating uh, hits any of this stuff so now you might be asking yourself why didn't i do that earlier 
And that's because the thin viscosity of the primer and the smaller front end sprayer allowed me to be extremely precise when laying down the coverage. The second reason is if the undercoating covers areas that get hot, like the exhaust, they tend to smell for the next few days of driving, which is obviously annoying. So take a few minutes now and save your nostrils later. Now we are ready for the rubberized undercoating. Typically, a gallon of Rust-Oleum undercoating costs about $15 to $25, while the primer tends to be a bit more expensive, around $50 to $75 for a gallon. This time, we're using the larger front-end sprayer to accommodate the thicker viscosity. It looks unbelievable. It's really thick, coating everything. But it's coming out of the gun pretty well. Can you imagine rolling this on? I couldn't be able to get in the tight areas. Look at that. There's no way I'd be able to get a brush back there. Harry, your technique is perfect. I'd like to give you some advice, but you're a, you're a natural. You know, I think like every kid wants to play with a, with like a hose and like spray the water. This is kind of the same thing. Yeah. I'm like painting the underneath of my car. That doesn't make sense to me. This is crazy. I'm seriously geeking out right now. <laughs> the second phase of the process basically mimics the first step with the difference being the bigger front end holds more undercoating or bed liner or even spray coatings, so it's a bit heavier to hold as expected. Second thing I noticed is that your arm speed must slow down compared to the thinner products used previously, again, mimicking the slow arm speed used when polishing extremely damaged paint, for example, as that increases the cut rate or effectiveness of the tools, pads, and products selected. Basically, the bottom line is this, slow your arm speed down when spraying thicker liquids. Now, whether you're using a spray can or this electric sprayer here, you wanna stay about six to eight inches away. You wanna use about 50% overlapping motions and then do one full coat, let it dry, and then add a second one. Now, this is super convenient that I have a lift here, but in your driveway, you can put it up on jack stands and it'll get the job done. After 45 minutes or so, we completed the first coat, let it dry for about a half hour, then completed our final coat. Be sure to read your product label for dry times as it'll be different for each liquid. After the second coat, we are just about at 100% coverage, but always go back and double check your work. While the final product is drying, John cleans the front end sprayers by filling the reservoir with acetone and allowing the suggested cleaner to flow through the system. Remember, do this as soon as possible after your job is done to make the cleanup and your life much easier. Next, dump out the cleaner into a bucket, then disassemble the front end components and let them soak in the acetone. It's a good idea to agitate all the components with a paintbrush to get into those tight areas. So John, it took us about two hours or so. Mm -hmm. You know, we did a power wash, right? And then scraped it all off underneath, put a primer coat on, then two coats of undercoating all oh, about two hours it wasn't that big of a deal what do you think how do you think it looks no i think it looks great i uh i think it, it went on pretty easy and now you're going to have uh good protection on the bottom of the car so you make sure that uh, it lasts a long time especially here in the northeast you absolutely need it i really appreciate you coming on man this is a lot this is a lot more fun than i thought it would be i thought we'd be underneath here with rollers and getting stuff in our hair and like all over our face and this was it's kind of geeky fun, you know, shooting the sprayer. That's so, the idea, to make it easy for anybody to do it. Well, only thing left we got to do is take this off and go for a ride. Great. 
Before we undercoated my 20-year-old Impala, it was beginning to show its age. Okay, let's be more realistic. It was downright rusty in the early stages of complete oxidation. And as some of you know, this car is more than transportation to me. I've slept in the back seat when detailing wasn't so good. I took my wife out on our first date in this car and 225,000 miles later, I still drive it every day. But since my focus has been heavily skewed towards the Porsche these days, I haven't kept up with the Impala as much as I should have. So this was long overdue and as you can see, well worth the effort. Well, the Impala project is coming along nicely. The top has been painted, and of course now the bottom has been undercoated. There's no doubt that there's multiple options for undercoating. Spray cans, roll-ons, compressed air, and now a new electric dispenser. No matter what method you're comfortable with, be sure to remember three important steps. Use weight-appropriate jack stands, and in our case, a car lift. Prep the area first for best adhesion, and be very sure you're in a well-ventilated area with proper safety gear. Outside of those important points, you can't really go too wrong. So have fun, be safe, and sleep well knowing your underbelly is sealed and protected from the elements. For more how-to videos like this, be sure to watch Season 1 and Season 2 of Drive Clean right here on the Drive channel. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions on videos you'd like to see, email me directly at larry at Thanks so much for watching.